Bruh, I literally make a CS resource tier list and the first thing I do when I go to the Discord is I see millions of people asking for a math resource tier list. Come on, you guys are that addicted to tier list? What? No, I'm kidding, you guys are probably just addicted to math. Both are understandable. And a bunch of you guys in the forum also wanted me to do math, so I guess we're doing math, okay? And to be fair, I have not done a math video in a while, so this should be good, okay? <laughs> it's good in the sense that it's very timely, okay? I did it one month after applications were due. Perfect timing, let's go. You guys totally know me from doing everything at the perfect timing. But anyways, enough roasting myself, let's get into the epicness. Hello everybody, I'm Karara, and today we are going to be putting all these epic math resources and summer programs into the thing. Now, full disclosure, before we get into it, I don't know like everything about all of these programs, okay? I've only done like a very small subset of them, and I will be very clear which ones I've done and which one I haven't. But I've also talked to a bunch of my friends who have attended these programs, so hopefully I can give you guys a good idea of which ones are good, which ones are not so good. So let us just get started with Sumac. <laughs> hey, let's go, we started with the worst one, let's go. <laughs> okay, no offense to anybody who has attended Sumac, but it is a ripoff, dude. It is a legitimate ripoff. First off, it's three weeks, okay? And it literally costs like twice as much as the programs that go for six weeks. It's crazy, I, I, don't, I don't get it. How do, they, how do they do this? How do they make people come to their program? Wait, let me let me just show you. Hold up. All right, so we're at the Sumac thing. We go to tuition and financial aid, and we scroll down. And dang, I missed it. <laughs> Where is it? Ah, there we go, bro. Three thousand two hundred fifty dollars, and you're like, okay, fine. Maybe that's not that bad, right? Research programs cost like ten k. Um, but this is the three week program. Okay, first off, that's that's one thing to note. But then if we compare it to, I don't know, let's try looking at Roth or something. Then we go. Where where's the cost on this dude, bro? Where is it, dude? It's only one thousand five hundred dollars. And how how long is it? Let's see. Yeah, it's six weeks. It's twice as long and it costs half as much. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> and, like, honestly, like, Sumac is probably, like, the same as, like, a Ross type program or a Promise type program. You're basically learning number theory, you're doing problem sets, that kind of thing. So, honestly, I don't know why people pay so much to go to Sumac. Like, all Stanford stuff is really overpriced. So, I'm gonna put it in Bro Y. This is the first time I put something in Bro Y, but it is deserving. Like, why does it cost so much? I don't get it. Okay, if any of you guys had a different experience with Sumac and, like, think it's worth the cost, let me know in the comments, but. Ross and Promise are so good, like, like there's no reason to worry about, like, paying so much to go to Sumac. Of course, you don't necessarily have the choice, but you know what I'm saying? Come on. Okay, AOPS courses. Now, I think, I think the main problem with AOPS courses, obviously, is cost, but all Olympiad prep things cost a lot of money, okay? So I think, I think I looked at the courses, and basically a 15-session class, wait, what was it? Oh, it was 18. 18-week 18, 18 class basically cost, like, $500. Which is not actually that bad. It's basically $27.5 per class, and each class is like one and a half hours. So, honestly, the cost isn't prohibitively bad. But then, if you consider the cost, it actually helps so hecking much, okay? AOPS classes basically taught me the majority of my math, okay? Like, in starting in seventh grade, I started taking the intro ones. I took like pre algebra, intro to number theory, intro to counting, and probability. All of them helped me so much. Like, I was like really, really bad at math in seventh grade. And after seventh grade, I was way better, okay? Like, in seventh grade, my AMC uh, 8 score was a 16, okay? And then my AMC 10 score was slightly better, it was like a 100, right? But then I go to 8th grade, and this is after taking a bunch of AOPS courses, and <laughs> my AMC score went from like 16 to 23, and my AMC 10 score went from 100 to like 124.5. So, <laughs> AOPS courses are for sure good. I learned like everything from them. I'm gonna say, uh, let's see. Yeah, I think, I think Epicness, because I learned everything I know from AOPS courses. The homework was really helpful. They forced you to learn how to write proofs in LaTeX. LaTeX is also a very good skill, so you should learn it. Um, what else is good about it? Yeah, it just covers everything, right? Like, they, they got courses for everything. Okay, college courses. Honestly, I'm gonna put this as eh, because, like, I think I think math programs are very interesting. Like, I think even, like, math research and all that stuff is really interesting. Competitive math is interesting, but college courses just teaches you, like, vocab. From, from what I'm aware of, okay? Like, I personally took multi. Obviously, that's not, like, very advanced math, right? But... I'm assuming that most college courses are going to be relatively the same, right? You're just learning theorems, you're just like doing grindy homework problems. It's kind of boring, it's kind of boring. Like one of my friends took discrete algebra at a nearby college. He, he took a bunch of stuff. I think he took differential equations, I forgot. But he just said that they were not particularly interesting. It's not like mind stimulating or anything. So I'm going to put it at, like it teaches you good information, but it doesn't like force you to do like interesting problems or anything. Okay, Promise. Now, honestly, like, Promise, Ross, and, like, um, I think, I think those are the main ones, but those basically fall under the number theory grind, um, summer camps, right? So basically the way these programs are structured is you basically get, like, a bunch of number theory problems, like, really, really hard number theory problems, and you basically have to work on them on your own time, and you attend, like, lectures once in a while. I really think that that, like, strategy, like, the strategy of doing problem sets as the majority of the work, and then the lectures as, like, a supplement to teach you how to do the problem sets is really, really cool. And one of my friends who went to Roth, he went for two years, and a lot of my other friends have gone to Roth. So I think both Promise and Roth would fall into the like pretty good category. 
Would it would it fall into epicness? One of my friends literally told me that like Roth is way better than awesome math, and I thought awesome math was pretty good. So maybe I'm gonna put it in epicness. I think we should go epicness because like <laughs> my friends have all said it's really good. Ah, oh, but should it should it be epicness? Okay, I'm gonna say pretty good because honestly, like I mean, it's, it's, it's their math programs, right? I don't I don't think they're like super super good, right? Okay, well, let's just save epicness for the really, really epic, okay? I will explain why the really, really epic ones are really, really epic. Alright, so now, math club! Okay, so basically the way it works is, at my school, is we have a program where the high school students come over to the middle school and teach the- Oh, uh, well, no, no, the middle school students come over to the high school, and then the high school students teach them math. Competitive math. Like, it's a perfect system, right? Like, the high schoolers get an opportunity to teach, they get an opportunity to perfect their own skills, and then at the same time, like, all the middle schoolers who are less experienced are getting, like, teaching from very experienced math Olympiad dudes. And honestly, like, Math Club is really what got me into doing math. Like, uh, like just doing a health course is not particularly interesting, but once you do start doing math with the club, with the other people, learning at the same time as you, you gotta compete with other people, that's where it gets really fun. So if you're in middle school, I would recommend joining the Math Club if you're not already part of the math club, right? Because, like, even though you might be good, right? You might be good, but you have no motivation to get better unless you're, like, with other people. Well, that's at least how I work. I don't know. It might be different for you. But math club was very, very helpful. So I'm gonna say pretty good. Like, honestly, it didn't teach me that much. Like, obviously, it got me started, and then I started studying on my own. But what I studied on my own is what actually made me improve. Math club is what motivated me to keep improving. Okay, AOPS books. AOPS books are basically the same as AOPS courses. Obviously, like, they don't have the deadlines, but I think if you're able to keep with your deadlines, the AOPS books are actually probably even more helpful than the courses, right? Because they have like a ton. Why can't I or reorder this? There we go. Basically, AOPS books have a ton of like challenge problems. They got a ton of easy problems. They got all the problems, right? So if you if you have something that you're struggling with, right? Like I would take a test and I would see, oh, I have no idea how to do like power of a point. Well, maybe I should just study like the entire power of a point section, try all the challenge problems. Dude, I think one of the things that I struggle with most is like polynomials and that kind of stuff because I kept, I kept forgetting remainder theorem and how to use it like well. Because like the remainder theorem is such an easy theorem, right? Like the like obviously if you plug in one, you're going to get the remainder if you divide by x minus one, but like how to use it in a problem is actually kind of hard. So I really worked through the challenge problems a bunch of times and that helped me a ton. So that's why I'm putting AOPS book first. Obviously they're expensive, but they're really, really helpful because they have like a bunch of different sections and each section has a ton of challenge problems so it's very very good it's like perfect if you want to learn a specific topic or even if you just want to learn everything right just go through the whole book you're good the sad thing is they don't have an intermediate number theory book i think which makes me sad i, for I forgot yeah but they don't there's like one book that they don't have and i'll, I'll, I'll be feeling bad <laughs> unfortunate wait do they have an intermediate number theory book they must right intermediate number theory oh they don't bro they don't oh no <laughs> sad Oh, they're, oh, yeah, yeah, see, they only have an introduction, and that was making me really sad, because I suck at number theory, so, <laughs> oh, no, why AOPS, you gotta do this to me. Okay, well, let's move on from that, <laughs> move on from being sad about AOPS books. Okay, past AMC problems, they're, like, pretty good, like, obviously, they're helpful, <laughs> if you want to study for AMC. You know, I should reorder this, I think this is a more correct ordering, but basically, past AMC problems are your best bet if you just want to get better at, like, timing, right, you want to be able to solve them faster, like, also, they, they, the thing that's good about AMC problems is that they have a general, like, um, difficulty level, right? Like, each year, your, like, 20 to 25 are gonna be, like, close to the same as the previous year's 20 to 25. Obviously, it's getting harder. Like, I don't know why they're making it harder each year. Well, I mean, that's debatable. But, uh, generally speaking, they're very similar, right? The difficulty level doesn't change that much. So, if you do these past AMC problems, you could have a very good idea of where you're at, like, how you're improving and that kind of thing. And also, what's nice about AMC is that they have, like, all like the whole like they have everything right they have geometry number theory and it's all just mixed up right so if you want to like take like past problems you could see what you're you're bad at right like just doing a ton of problems and seeing which ones you miss the most like basically once i got past amc and i was studying for amy the only the only studying that i did was amy right and volume two like AOP volume two because volume two teaches you more advanced stuff and like just doing past amy problems gets you like um practice just not making silly mistakes like making sure you know all the concepts um, being able to do it fast, all that stuff. Okay, Alpha Star. Um, honestly, like, okay, I, I looked it up, and basically Alpha Star costs like four fifty for a fifteen session class. I forgot, but it was basically it was basically costing more per class than an AOPS course, right? And I personally think the AOPS courses were, were perfect. So even though I did not do Alpha Star, okay, I I have no experience with Alpha Star for math. I still think that AOPS is just generally better, right? They're they're more established. They have online problems. They have like teaching. They teach you LaTeX and all that stuff. So. I, I personally think the AOPS courses are better. Like, honestly, I haven't heard that many good things about Alpha Star Math. Like, I think people have even told me that Alpha Star made them, like, not like math when, because their parents made them do it too early. So, I'm just gonna put it at eh. 
but above college courses because it's pretty good for competitive math. Okay, um, other math competitions. So that's basically like CMIMC, right? Carnegie Mellon, so on, HMMT, Harvard, uh, Harvey, I don't know what, Harvard MIT Math Tournament. <laughs> well, why did I say Harvey Mudd for no reason at all? Um, let's see, what else is there? There's like Sumac. No, no, that's <laughs> bro. My brain's fried. No, there's there's also SMT, right? And then there's like um, there's a ton of these all over the place. There's BMT, Berkeley Math Tournament. So these ones are uh. I would also say S, <laughs> because like, the problem with these ones is that the difficulty varies a lot, right? Because they don't have to be a standardized test, it's just a one-off thing, like, pe it's just competing directly on that day, right? So, generally speaking, these have a lot more, like, variety and difficulty. I, I took CMIMC and I got, like, completely shrecked, okay? CMIMC this year was so hard. So, like, it's not that good in terms of, like, problem difficulty. I personally think it varies a lot. But what's really good about these ones, obviously, is that they're split up into categories, right? Like most most of these competitions have like geometry rounds, they have calculus rounds, they have um, number theory rounds, algebra rounds, whatever. So if there's anything you want to do, you just look at the particular round and you can just grind like a ton of like number theory rounds and like you can grind a ton of geometry rounds from BMT. So if you want specific things, other math competitions are pretty good, right? Like I could just go to BMT right now and see. Yeah, they have like all the problems. Like, so you basically have a really massive archive. We could uh, that be MMT. We do not. <laughs> we're not middle schoolers. Okay, let's see. Or you guys might be, but <laughs> we're we're looking at the high school stuff. Okay, so we could go go to the geometry problems. You basically got like a ton of geometry problems. Ten geometry problems. That is crazy. And you could also see the solution. So it's very nice. Okay, other books. Um, other books is basically talking about like EGMO. Uh, what's it called? <laughs> Euclidean geometry for mathematical Olympiads. Um, basically written by Evan Chen, who's a god. Okay, <laughs> so his book is really really good, but it's probably too advanced for like the majority of people. Unless you're like doing really well on Amy, I think that's at the point when you should be doing these other books. Uh. I personally haven't heard that many other books, right? Are there any other, like, really common math books? Um, I honestly haven't heard of that many, but if, if there's any other books, I think they'll fall under this category. But I think, I think this is, like, mostly for really advanced people. Um, I think, I, I don't know how good it is. I'll say pretty good, because, like, a lot of the really advanced people, they start looking at these other books, and it helps them out with, like, JMO and AMO and that kind of thing. All right, so now we're talking about RSI and Prime. And these are very different programs, okay? Like, the rest of the stuff we've been talking about is mostly, like, competition math or, like, pure number theory, like, problem sets or that kind of thing. This one is pure research, okay? This is pure research. It could be math or it could be bio. I don't think it's, like, limited to math research, but you could do math research at these programs. What's cool about it is that it's free, okay? First off, it's free, it's very selective, and you get paired with these professors that are insanely good, right? It's an MIT program. So I think RSI is the summer program, and then Primes is the um, year-round program. And what's really good about this is that if you go to these programs, you not only get to see, like, real math research, which is probably, like, way bigger brain than, like, competitive math and that kind of thing, and also, like, it's probably more interesting, right? You're working with a legitimate professor, and you're doing, like, cool stuff. And to top that, if you actually, like, care about your research at these programs, you can submit it to science fairs, okay? And some of these, like, it's crazy. Wait, wait, let me show you. Like, some of these dudes, like, they get into, like, the craziest awards at these science competitions. Like, literally, look at these dudes. Dude, first and fourth at Regenerant Science Talent Search. That's crazy, okay? 250k, holy moly. So, I I'm gonna say, like, if you if you ever get, like, a choice between any, like, math programs, right? I'm pretty sure, like, RSA Prime should be at the top of your list. Because it's free, dude. It's literally free. And you're, like, working with top-of-the-line professors. So, <laughs> I don't know. If you get RSI, it's probably gonna be your top choice. Okay, Awesome Math. I think Awesome Math was really good for me. Um, one of my friends told me that it was, like, really useless for him. But... Basically, the way Awesome Math works is it's a three and a half week program. Um, it's, it's not that expensive and not that cheap either. But basically, what's cool about it is that you get to choose two courses, right? And you basically take those two courses and they teach you a bunch of cool stuff. And in my opinion, when I went to the residential one in Texas, right? <laughs> Shout out to all the Texas dudes. I learned a ton, dude. I took like combinatorics one and geometry one and it was crazy, dude. My my teacher in the geometry one was some IMO guy and he was so, he was like really good. I liked him a ton. And he taught me, like, a ton of cool stuff. Like, between 7th and 8th grade, I already told you guys that I improved a ton. And I think Awesome Math was the main reason for that. I, that was the only math program I attended between those two years. And I think it improved my skills a ton. Like, it's literally pretty short. But the amount of stuff you get out of it, they, they give you problem sets. They give you lecture notes. They, they give you, like, tests even. So, it's really nice. I, I think that Awesome Math was epic. Well, well, not epic. Okay, pretty good. Pretty good, I think. Um, I think it should be, like... Let's, let's say it's around here, yeah. I do gotta take into consideration my friend who said that Ross is way better than Awesome Math, so I'm gonna put it here, okay? Okay, Prove It, Prove It Math Academy. I'm gonna say eh. It's probably eh. It's for sure eh. I think it's eh over here. So Prove It Math Academy is basically like a two-week program that teaches you proof-based stuff. Um, 
Like, I went to it because it's pretty easy to get in. Like, I was one of the better people there, even though I didn't even call. Well, no, I qualified for Amy once before I went there and barely. So I think it's not as, like, selective or there's not as many applicants to Proven Math Academy. But what's cool about it is that the problems themselves and the things they teach are pretty advanced, right? So I learned, like, pretty advanced number theory. I don't remember any of it, okay? Don't roast me. <laughs> like, like, you taught me Burnside's level, but I have no idea what it says anymore, okay? I don't know what groups are. I don't know what rings are. <laughs> Dude, I don't remember anything that I learned there, but I, I did learn I did learn a lot about how to write proofs. I, I the problem sets they gave they basically have this really epic competition at the, like from the for the whole two weeks, right? And basically they give you a problem set at the beginning and you work with your team to solve as many as you can by the end, right? And basically I remember that some of the problems were super super interesting and I would work with my teammates like for till like late in the night just trying to solve the problem, so that was really cool, dude. Oh yeah, another thing that was great about Prove It is that I learned about the combinatorial arguments, dude. Combinatorial arguments are the coolest proofs you're ever going to do in your life, so if you, if you don't know what those are, please search them up, okay? They're very fun. So basically, I'm going to put Prove It at F because, honestly, it didn't focus that much on competitive math, and I was not that interested in the number theory side or, like, any of these more advanced kind of things, so... I think, I think people who are interested in that kind of stuff will enjoy it a lot more. Dude, Canada USA Math Camp, let's go! Dude, this one is so insane, okay. I, I applied to it twice, and I didn't get in either time, but, like, it's, it's really fun, okay? Like, it was at the top of my list for what I wanted to do in the summer, because I basically looked at it, and they have so many options, right? Basically, the way it works is you go there, and there's a bunch of, like, courses you could choose from, and what's cool about it, I asked, like, an IMO gold medalist what he thought about it, and he said it was his favorite program ever, okay? What's really cool about it is that it has so much flexibility, right? You could basically choose what courses you took. Um, the, the guy I talked to basically said that he took a ton of the hardest courses you could take, because, like, obviously, he's an IMO gold medalist. What else is he going to do? But then he also said that, like, some other people took, like, about no classes, right? So, essentially, the idea is, like, no matter how good you are, you're probably going to benefit a little from Canada USA Math Camp. Another thing that's good about it is that it's very prestigious, right? Very few people get in. I think it's like 120 out of like 3,000. It's pretty crazy. But the reason I wanted to do it is because it had so many options for courses. Let's see. Canada, USA, Math Camp. It had like bioinformatics. It had like, um, I don't know. It had like physics stuff too. Like all the, all the courses were really fun. Let's see. Where is this? Mathematics. Learn more about course topics at this. So yeah, you can basically see um, they have discrete mathematics. Like there's a bunch of like math focused stuff. But you could also learn about like calculus, you could learn about like computer science, you could learn about dude, there's cryptography, dude. I don't want to take that. God dang it. Bruh, so sad. There's also connections to other fields, you got discussions, you got problem solving, all that good stuff. So yeah, Canada USA is for sure really good. Like even really skilled math guys like think it's really good, and I really really wanted to go there, but unfortunately I didn't get in, but I, I think it's really good. Also, it's cheap, okay? It's six weeks, one thousand five hundred dollars, same as Ross but it's very, very good. All right, so now we got Mathily. My brother basically went to Mathily. He's the only person I know who went to Mathily, but I think he said it was pretty decent if you're interested in like advanced math. So I'm gonna say like around Ross and Promise and everything. I think it's slightly more expensive than Ross if I'm not mistaken, but I think it's still like pretty good if you wanna learn advanced math. I think all of these basically fall in the same category of like hard problem sets, learning advanced math, that kind of stuff. Okay, <laughs> just one last look. Let's just make sure we haven't misplaced anything. Hmm. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna move Ross to Epicness because a bunch of the cool math guys that I like, like respect, they they all went to Ross. Like, and a bunch of them, and, like all of them said that it was good. They literally went back twice. Like all of them, it's crazy. So I, I'm for sure gonna put this. Um, I think I think that's good. All right, and we got poor old lonely Sumac down here. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> but that is all I got for you guys today. So <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching. As always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more. Comment down below if there's anything else you guys want to see. Click on the videos if you guys are interested. But other than that, we are done for today. Thank you guys so much for watching again. And see you guys next time.